His eyes went wide before his senses returned to him. He quickly turned and bolted, cursing to himself. He had been standing idly watching it for too long. Just then, the ground shook, and what he had feared had come to fruition. Loud clashes and booms rattled across the city, followed by the sounds of shattered glass and buildings crashing down to the ground. Waves of hot air swept across with each crash and boom, sending another structure toppling down. The screams began, galloping feet against the street, cars, walkers, horses, and men. They all ran, away from death that came from the sky, raining down fire with every beat of their chest. A sick rhythm as each bomb blew away, brick and steel, flesh and bone, glass and silver. Boom, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three. The ground shook violently with each bomb dropped. The skyships flew overhead, gaining ground with each second. Henry barely had time to make any distance before they were only a few blocks away from him. The deafening sounds of engines roaring, shrieked, and rang in his ears as they got closer and closer. His tired legs screamed at him as he pushed them to go faster, running as fast as his feet could take him. They were almost overhead, the explosions rocking the buildings behind him as he struggled to keep his balance. Rubble chased after him, threatening to fall over and crush him. Shit! Fuck! Fuck! Shit! He cursed to himself, dodging the flying debris, trying to stay on his feet as he stumbled onto the ground, his hands catching his fall. A bomb fell just a few meters away from him. The explosion nicked him, the force of it sending him flying forward as the back of his shirt caught some of the flames. The pavement gave way and blew apart like a volcano, sending flying chunks of cement into the sky before crashing down and crushing some of those who were fleeing from the chaos. Henry found himself lying on the ground, his face pressed to the floor with an ache in his lungs. His side screamed at him, hearing an audible crack as he tried to lift himself up. His arms felt like jelly, barely able to budge him a few inches from the ground. He took a deep breath, a mistake on his part. Sharp pain cried out as the air entered his lungs and his side stabbed into him, making him scream. Yet no sounds came from his mouth. He closed his eyes, gritting his teeth, forcing himself off of the floor. He could still feel the heat from the tiny flames at the back of his shirt. As soon as he got himself into a seated position, he exhaled forcefully, opening his eyes to the carnage around him. There were bodies crushed by debris, some pinned down by their legs, screaming as they tried to lift the large chunks of the road off of them. One poor lad had his entire head crushed. Henry lifted himself up from the ground, shaky legs barely holding him up. He could hear people screaming and begging him for help, but his mind seemed empty. He stared at them blankly, not understanding a word they said. The pain in his side kept jabbing at him. The stinging in his lungs increased with every breath he took. The world was still spinning around him slightly, unable to really focus. He was supposed to do something before this. He was going somewhere, wasn't he? His consciousness came back in full force as his eyes widened. The orphanage, the children, Camilla and Jeremy. It felt like a wave of water washing over him, and suddenly he felt a panic in his bones. All of a sudden his legs seemed to work again, and his senses returned to him. Help, please, please, get me out of this. The voices became much clearer now. He turned to see a man with his leg crushed by a large piece of what used to be the sidewalk. But please, I think it's broken. Henry shook his head and rushed toward the man, stopping by his side. Ah, oh, shit, it must have been completely flattened, he said, placing his hand on the debris. Okay, I'm going to try to lift it all right. On three. You ready? The man took in a sharp breath and nodded. Three? Henry yelled as he pushed the debris off the man's leg with all his strength. The man screamed as the debris was lifted, fragments of his bones and blood sticking to its underside. He cried out with tears streaming down his face, fists slamming into the ground. Bloody bastard! You fucking said on three! He cried out. Sorry, if I counted, 
you might have changed your mind, Henry said, trying his best to comfort the poor guy. To, that's a fair point. Just please g get me out of here. All right. You don't have much of a leg now, so I'll try to carry you okay. Do you have a name? I'm Henry. Not the best of circumstances, but nice to meet you. The man gritted his teeth as Henry lifted him up, sending a jolt of pain to what was left of his leg. He took in another sharp breath, seething in pain. He shook his head as he tried to lean on the lad. Evan, and nice to fucking meet you too. All right, Evan. Just keep talking to me. We're going to get you out of here, okay? There's... there's got to be a rescue unit on their way, right? We're in good hands. We'll be fine, okay? Don't worry. T thank you. I thought I was done for. Really? Thank you so... The man's words were suddenly cut off, as a disgusting squelch was heard. The sudden force from behind had knocked both of them forward, but the man had seemingly stayed in place, lifted a few inches from the ground even. Henry hit the ground and whipped around. He gasped and suddenly found himself backing away. The man started to gurgle and choke on his own blood. A hand, where it shouldn't be, protruded from the man's chest, lifting him up from the floor. It only took seconds before the man expired, and the hand that impaled his chest tossed him aside, bloodying the pavement. Henry stared in shock and horror. His limbs felt frozen, looking at the creature where the man previously was. It smiled back at him, fangs flashing in the darkness, the figure illuminated only by the few still-working street lamps. Well, what do we have here? It said, stepping closer. It was slow, but deliberately so. Boots hitting the floor, but barely making any noise. Nimble, light-footed, but menacing. Poor broken thing lost too much blood. He would have barely made a snack. It said, glancing at the corpse of what used to be Evans. It turned back to face him. You, however, I think you'd do nicely. The creature stepped closer, walking directly under the street lamp. Black uniform, red armband, and a rotating domina on its back. It's... His face was pale with pointed ears and red eyes. A strigoi. P please. Henry stuttered, trying to back away from the monster in the shape of a man. Please don't kill me. Please let me go. Please, I have children. The Strigoi mocked him, letting out a soft chuckle. He shook his head softly. I've heard it all before. It never works, you know. You'll die either way. The Strigoi stood before him before reaching down and grabbing Henry by the neck. He began to gasp for breath, choking under the monster's grip. He tried to peel the Strigoi's hands from his throat, but he couldn't pry them. Instead, he felt his body slowly being lifted into the air, his feet leaving the ground. I'd rather not have prey that squirms and kicks around, so I'll kill you first. Not to worry. It'll be painless. Henry could feel his consciousness fading. The air in his lungs had run out, and desperate gasps filled his ears. Still, no air would come through. His vision was getting blurry. Everything around him started to turn dark. He let his arms hang loose, no longer having the strength to escape. He was going to die here. He knew it. His gasps became shorter, softer, until they stopped. He slowly closed his eyes. Everything around him felt like a wave of stillness. He knew it. He was going to die. But fate would have to say otherwise. A loud bang rang out, jolting him back to his senses. He felt the pressure around his throat disappear and felt a sudden pain in his side as he crashed to the ground with a thud. Henry gasped for air, taking in as much as he could, not caring about the sting in his lungs. He turned to see the Strigoi clutching his chest hissing at a man just a few meters away. He held a rotating domina that still puffed smoke and a shovel on his back. The strigoi bared his fangs and lunged at the man, but the pull of the trigger was faster than the distance he could cover. The bullet fired straight into the strigoi's head, lodging itself inside before fracturing into a dozen pieces, the force of which knocked the strigoi backwards, falling to the floor. 
The man holding the domina walked toward the body and fired two more shots for good measure. It was all happening too fast. Henry shook his head, trying to regain all his senses again. He looked up to see the man offering him a hand. He didn't recognize him at first, but the old scruffy voice brought him back from his cloudiness. You owe for that one, bruv. I expect a full meal when we get out of here, yeah? Vance smiled at him. V Vance? You're alive? Course I am. You think I'd lay down and beg for my life? I'd show those bloody bastards who run this town. Now up on your feet, lad. We have children to go rescue, yeah? The kids? Camilla? Jeremy? Oi, keep your cool. We're going to find them and save them, okay? Okay, okay. Where'd you get the domina? Yanked it from a downed copper. You mean... Yeah. Bastard was long gone. Vance nodded at him, helping him up to his feet. Henry let out a deep sigh of relief. He turned and hugged the man, still gasping for breath. Thanks, Vance. I thought I was. He swallowed hard and shook his head. I thought that was it for me. I felt it. I was seconds away. Vance nodded and patted his hack, returning the hug. Oi, don't be crying on me now, bruv. I wouldn't have wanted to lose a good friend either way. Now let's get those kids of yours, yeah? Vance said with a smile, pulling Henry away and patting his shoulders. Chin up, lad. Let's go. Yeah, let's. Here. Vance said, handing him the shovel strapped on his back. Just imagine shoveling coal. Only now it's fucking Strigoi faces. Should be similar enough, yeah? Henry held back a small laugh. Yeah. He took the shovel and felt its weight on his hands, swinging it around. The end of the shovel was made of steel, not silver, so he wouldn't be able to kill a strig with it. Still, it would definitely do damage and slow them down. Enough for Vance to put a few shots in them at least. They would have to make do. Yeah, this is enough. Good. Let's book. Vance nodded and led the way forward, keeping his gun up and ready. Henry did the same, keeping a stance as the two walked through the ruins of the city. Ground troops were probably scattering through the city already. The bombs were to cause chaos. The rest could walk in without any further problems. His thoughts went back to the children. His anxiety nearly reached a fever pitch as he felt his blood rise to his temples. He hoped he wasn't too late. He hoped none of the bombs fell on the orphanage. He held on to hope like a life jacket in an open ocean. He hoped. He hoped he'd make it in time. But hope was a double-edged sword. Hey everyone, hope you loved the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe for more awesome sci-fi content. You can also support us by hitting the thanks button at the bottom of the video. Your generosity goes a long way. Every bit helps us bring you more stories from the stars. Thanks a bunch.